Hey guys, happy early Halloween to you all. Instead of buying store-bought Halloween treats, wanna consider making your own. I'm gonna show you today how to make a variety of chocolate Halloween treats. It's fun to do and you can be so creative. You can add your own varieties or your favorite varieties of candies and chocolates. And it's a great time to make chocolates for those you love and include them in on the making of these treats. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Consider subscribing as it helps support the channel. I offer videos every week on baking and confections, as well as some culinary and some surprises once in a while too. As an extra bonus for all my Toronto viewers, I'm gonna to be giving away some of my Halloween chocolates. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. As well, follow me on Instagram at Bite and Shoe. Tag me in your story saying how much you would like some Halloween chocolates and I'll be sending it to you. There's limited quantities of the chocolate, so be sure to tag me as soon as possible. So now's the time for me to wash this off and I'm gonna show you how to make all these chocolatey treats. To prepare the chocolates, I am using a variety of chocolate molds. The molds I'm using are polyvinyl chloride or PVC for short. They are food grade and economical to purchase if you're starting out working with chocolate. Next, I'm demonstrating how to make cornets or paper piping bags. With a rectangle sheet of parchment paper, fold the paper to create two triangles. Carefully cut the paper along the fold As I am left-handed, I've positioned the paper to have the shorter side of the triangle to be on my dominant side. Locate where the tip of the piping bag will be. With your dominant hand, lift the corner of the paper and fold it over to begin forming a cone. Take the second corner and lift it around the cone while gently pulling the excess paper away from the piping tip. Position your thumbs inside the bag and your fingers will be on the outside. With your thumbs, push the inside layers of the paper towards the tip of the bag. Your fingers will pull the outside layers away from the tip. This will help to create a nice sharp tip in the piping bag. I like to fold the tip of the piping bag and fold down the excess overhang of the paper into the cone. This will help to hold the piping bag in place. If you are right-handed, flip the paper around so the shorter side of the triangle is on your right side. I am using a variety of dark, milk, and white couverture chocolates. To crystallize or temper the chocolate, visit my crystallization video here. Fill your piping bag with crystallized chocolates and pipe the chocolate into the cavities of the mold. Every once in a while, roll the piping bag so the bag is taut and not slack. This will help with the piping process. Once you've piped the chocolate into the molds, gently tap the mold to release any air bubbles and to level the surface of the chocolate. Place the mold in the fridge to set. As these are small chocolates, they will only need to be in the fridge for a short time. Approximately 10 to 20 minutes should do. Then remove it from the fridge and continue to set at room temperature until ready to use or in mold. For piping into lolly molds, the filling process remains the same. Once the mold is filled, slide in lolly sticks. Give the sticks a little twist to ensure they are completely covered with the chocolate. I used wooden skewers as I like the elongated handles. Just remove the sharp tips. For these skeleton lollies, or for any mold that have details within, use contrasting chocolates to bring out the design. With a fine tip cornet, pipe in the details in the cavity to bring out the features. Allow the first layer to partially set at room temperature for a few minutes, then fill the mold with a contrasting chocolate. Pipe the chocolate around the perimeter of the mold, then work your way into the center. Be careful not to overfill the mold with chocolate. For the skull chocolates, pipe dark chocolate into the mold to accentuate any details you want to pick up. Partially fill with white chocolate and place your favorite candy into the chocolate. I'm using Maltesers, which are chocolate-covered malt balls. Embed the Maltesers until it is flush with the surface of the chocolate. Allow to set and attach the other half by piping a bit of chocolate as it will act as glue. This particular mold is perfect for cookie lovers. Fill the inside cavities with chocolate. The same process for the two-toned chocolates. To decorate the mold, add stripes of a contrasting chocolate into the cavities. You can use a piping bag, 
or in this case, drizzling fast with a spatula will work too. When filling the molds with a second layer of chocolate, only partially fill it. Place cookies inside the mold and allow to set. Depending on the thickness of the cookie, as well as the style you choose, you can expose and show the cookie or cover them with an additional layer of chocolate. To make freeform chocolates, you can also make chocolate bark. Making chocolate bark is great as it uses up any leftover chocolates you have remaining. Pour a layer of chocolate onto a sheet of parchment paper. Have fun and add more layers of contrasting chocolates if you're using more than one. Hold down the corner of one side of the paper and lift the other side of the corner while tapping. This will help to spread the chocolate. To make a spider web, pipe a spiral of white chocolate. With a skewer, draw out the pattern of the spider web, working from the center, then out to the edges. While the chocolate is still wet, add your favorite candies. I'm adding Reese's Pieces, and if you're from Canada, then you know about Smarties. They're candy-coated chocolates, similar to M&M's. Let's add some festive candy corn to the mix too. To make mini or individual pieces of bark, apply the same method by pouring chocolate into cookie cutters. I'm finishing the decorating of these Halloween treats with some chocolate jack-o'-lanterns and of course a spider for the spider web. Now that all the chocolates have set, it's time to release from their molds. On a clear surface, carefully turn the molds over. If properly crystallized, the chocolates will release easily. As the molds are PVC, a gentle press on the mold will also help to release the chocolates. Look at all these wonderful chocolates. With a few simple chocolate molds and a bit of fun and creativity, you can create a wonderful selection of Halloween treats to share with your friends and family. Plan to make these for your next Halloween party. If you found value in this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're in the Toronto area and you're interested in a box of Halloween chocolates, be sure to subscribe, follow me on Bite and Shoe on Instagram, and tag me in a story sharing how much you would love the chocolates and how much you love the channel. Thanks for staying to the end of this video. I'll see you next week with a brand new video. But in the meantime, YouTube recommends watching this video and this playlist. Cheers.